Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 13th, 2017. First up, this is from my friend Bob H. from Bloomberg Technology. Pint sized satellites promise spy quality images cheap. Uh, for decades, spy agencies have had access to magic seeming technology known as SAR or synthetic aperture radar. A satellite with SAR on board can send radar beams from space bounced off Earth, then returned to a sensor which assembles the information to produce an immaculate image. The key to the technology, what separates it from high-powered optical telescopes, is that the beams can pass through clouds and work at night. They make the invisible seem visible. So a young company in Palo Alto called Capella Space, they announced a $12 million new funding for a project uh, May 9th. They figured out a way to create smaller, cheaper versions of SAR satellites, and these are going to be about the size of a beach ball. Um, a typical satellite weighs about 2,500 pounds and can be about the size of a bus, costs about $500 million. So these are going to be more smaller satellites circling the Earth, and they should be able to, when they have enough of them up, give you a picture within an hour of any place on the Earth with a really good about one meter resolution on the ground. Now they're seeing a typical cost of a picture for one of the more expensive satellites if you want to buy a picture of a certain area on the earth can run you four thousand eight thousand dollars so they hope to beat that deal although in the article they don't say exactly what the cost of their images are going to be but maybe if they could even get them down to one thousand or two thousand dollars for an equivalent image with the equivalent resolution so this is a 26 year old guy Bena Zeda is his name I hope I pronounced that right born in Iran he ended up in Houston for elementary school at age 10 he was suspended for organizing a Pokemon tournament and then he returned to Houston at 16 and lived on his own while finishing high school. He spent most of his night alone eating cheap food, uh, McDonald's, and going to Walmart. So he didn't fit into school very well, but evidently he became a pretty good design engineer. He uh, went to University of Texas at Austin and uh, got a degree in aerospace engineering. So Capella says it will launch its first satellite later this year, followed by several more in 2018. So I think that probably means by about 2020, if everything goes according to plans, Maybe you'll be able to buy pictures for, you know, $1,000. Maybe they'll even get them down cheaper. I don't know. But, yeah, that's kind of cool. And next up from Space.com. NASA won't fly astronauts on first Orion SLS test flight around the moon. That just makes sense to me, and I think I've even said it before, too, that your very first flight of uh, a ship like that, where you're going all the way to the moon and back after so long not doing it, I think it's a good idea to do it as a robotic mission and just see how it works, and then you don't really risk anybody if there should be some failure. So, the first flight of NASA's new generation heavy lift rocket space launch system is now scheduled for 2018 and will not include a human crew, agency officials said officially May 12th. As of 2016, NASA had planned for the SLS's first flight to take place in 2018 without a crew on board, but the transition team that the Trump's administration sent to the agency earlier this year asked for an internal evaluation of the possibility of launching a crew atop the SLS inside the agency's Orion space capsule. Um, technically feasible, but yeah, it's probably not the safest thing to do. Do it as your second launch or maybe third, something like that. So, The internal uh, evaluation really reaffirmed that the baseline plan we had in place was the best way for us to go. We had a good handle on what and how uncrewed mission will actually help the first crew mission of SLS. NASA has been looking at the schedule for EM-1 for a while now, following various issues that have delayed multiple aspects of the mission. Well, I can see that, too. I mean, returning to the moon is no small feat. I mean, we also got the fact that China's breathing down our backs, too, talking about possibly setting up a, a permanent moon base sometime in the future. So, And as I hope, too, this for us is just a stepping stone to go on to Mars, which I hope it is. I mean, that's, I think, part of what this is about. And uh, let's see. Disruptions, for, this is from the Washington Post, disruptions from global cyber attack continue to ripple worldwide. You may Maybe you've picked that up in the news, but it really especially hit the national health system in England uh, quite hard out of all the different attacks. And what this is is a ransomware attack, and it's a type of a worm to where you don't necessarily, once it gets into the network system, you don't necessarily have to do anything. A lot of times they say, well, don't open an email, you know, don't open attachments, stuff like that. But um, when this gets into a network system, it could spread on its own without any help from the outside. So they estimate something like maybe about a, a third of a million computers may have been affected worldwide, especially Russia, too. They said Russia was really attacked mostly because of the fact that they have old Windows XP machines, and a lot of these are, are pirated machines, too, and pirated software, which... 
isn't necessarily you know upgraded on a regular basis or probably can't even be upgraded because then they would uh, you know be giving away the fact that they have pirated software so it says it hit Britain's beloved but creaky National Health Service particularly hard causing worldwide disruptions and interrupting medical procedures across hospitals in England and Scotland the government said that 48 of the NHS's 248 organizations were affected but by Saturday evening all but six were back to normal when asked if the British government paid any ransom in this situation, a Downing spokesman said no and pointed out that House Secretary Amber Rudd has advised that others don't either. Yes, I advise the same thing too. Don't pay the ransom even if it does. I mean, I've heard in some cases it actually does work and some businessmen especially have paid it to get their um, data back. But the way to go is uh, just do multiple backups and uh, don't keep your backup, um, backup uh, your hard drives that are on backup don't keep them attached to your computer do your backups like once a week once every few days whatever way you can do it to where you'll lose the least amount of important information possible and disconnect the hard drive and put it in a safe place in fact the best way to do it would be to do uh, routine backups on a, a weekly or monthly basis and store your hard drive off-site if you have extremely important information that you cannot afford to lose or afford to have encrypted because that's what this does it actually goes inside your machine and takes all your important files and encrypts them and then says they'll give you the decryption key if you pay three hundred dollars or whatever I mean there's various different schemes and they used a, an exploit I guess that the uh, national NHS Brit British Britain's during the tech let's see what is it the uh, or no the NSA I think this is uh, originally an NSA um, exploit that uh, what it was was uh, when uh, Windows caught on to it they actually released a patch I think in May March no in March back in March they, they uh, had a patch that actually took care of this but a lot of people didn't get the patch installed on their machine or they have uh, older machines that they just don't bother upgrading as much so anyway that's about it for this week all the links down below to all the articles I talked about will be in the description take care everybody I will catch you next week